Today we're going to be taking a look at character interactions. Character interactions allow you to perform specific actions or requests involving other characters, such as offering marriage, declaring war, or revoking titles. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can create your very own. Now, as always, we have our mod file on the left and the game files on the right. So we need to make sure that we go into the common folder of the games files. And then the thing we're looking for is character interactions. So within our mod folder, we need to create a folder called character interactions. So we will put that in there and then we will open both files. So on the left, we have the mod on the right, we have the game files. Now in this folder, you will find all different types of interactions that are already in the game. So obviously you can go through each of those, have a look at the code. If you're creating a character interaction that's similar to one of the games, then you can just copy that file and then change it to whatever fits your mod. As with every folder, the underscore file is basically just a help file from the game's developers, you know, just giving you an idea of what to do in these files. Now we're gonna copy over any one of these files, it don't matter what one you copy, because then it means that it's in the right code format. And then you can call the name of this file whatever you want, we're just gonna call it ZMT My Interactions. So here's a little file that I've set up and I'm gonna run through each thing and tell you what it basically does. So this name at the top here, ZMT My Interaction, this will be whatever you want to call your interaction. You can name this whatever you want, just make sure that you also add it into your localization files. Otherwise, in game, this is what will be displayed, what's up here, so you need to make sure you add that in. Now your icon is the icon that displays to the left of the name. Now you can create your own, but I'm not gonna go into that today, but I will leave a little list on the right-hand side showing you what icons are already in the game. Now basically the category will be where it lists, like on the UI. Now it'll usually always be interaction underscore category, and then this will usually change based on where you want it in the UI. But again, I'll put up on the right hand side the different types of categories that are available in game. Interface priority is how important it is uh, on the UI. So if you want it near the top, just put like 100. Now you can keep changing this, load up the game, see where it lists and then edit it later on if you want it in a different position. Your description, again, that's for localization. So in your localization file, you will have this as the name of it, and then this will be the description. Now you can put whatever you want here, but I usually just put whatever the name of this with D-E-S-C on the end. If you set this to yes, then that means that you will only be able to use this on characters that are within diplomatic range of your character. And I guess that comes down to like the distance on the map they are to you, or if you've had any previous interactions with them before. But if you want it just to skip all that and be able to use this interaction on anybody in the game, then you can just put no. Now is shown is how you determine on who this interaction is shown for. So who can use this interaction in game. Now the first line of code we have here is so you can't use this interaction on your own character. So the actor, i.e. the person using the interaction, cannot use it on themselves. If you want to be able to use this on yourself, then obviously you will take out this line of code here. So here you set the conditions on who can use this. So is AI no? If you don't want AI to use this character interaction, then you will put that. Now this line of code will be for something later on, which I'll explain. And then you can put has trait. There's two ways you can do this. If the character just needs to have one trait, then you can just do this like that. And then that means they have to have whatever trait you put in here. But if it's for multiple traits, then you can use the or command uh, like this, and then you can just have multiple traits. You can just keep putting them as many as you want. Now dynasty, this line of code here means you can only use this on characters that are within your dynasty, like within your house. So again, if you want to be able to use this on any character, then obviously you will need to delete this line of code here. Now scope recipient is the person that the interaction is being used on. Now there's a lot of conditions you can set within the scope actor and scope recipient. Look in the game files, you know, have a look what they've gone for. And if there's anything that you want to use yourself that they've used, and obviously just put it in these sections. All you have to remember here is that the scope actor is the person using the interaction and the scope recipient is who the interaction is being used on. Now with this line of code here, if you just have one trait, then you want this line of code to be not. That's if you're using one thing, right? But if you want to use multiple conditions, then you can use the nor command. Now you can use the not and, and then an or command, but we've just gone for the nor command here. So in here, you see we have scope actor and scope recipient. You basically want this to be the same as what you have up here, right? So you want your scope actor conditions to be set the same as this and obviously your recipient set the same as this. And then what this will do is if you can't use the interaction in game, the game will tell you why you can't use it. And then we've just gone for is alive, so this can only be used on characters that are alive. And then we have on accept, and then this is what will happen once they accept the interaction. 
So what we've done here is scope actor, we saved the scope actor as actor target. And then that means we can recall this scope later on. And I'll explain more about that when we get to it. Scope recipient, we saved the scope as recipient target. And then once they accept this, we want them to add this trait. If you want to set the faith, you can put set underscore character underscore faith. And then what you would do is you'll put your faith in here. So after it says faith in the two dots, you will then put whatever your faith is called in there. And then we've got set relation. Now there's different types of relations that you can have. Again, on the right of the screen, I will leave all the different types of relations that you can get in game. And then you will put that in here. And then if you see, it says equal scope at to target. Now this is recalling our saved scope of actor target and that's why we saved it so we can use it later on and that's what I mean. Now a different way of doing that is say we wanted to add an opinion. Now there's lots of opinion modifiers. Uh, you can find them in the opinion modifier um, folder in the games files. Now obviously you can create your own but whatever modifier you use you just have to type it in there after modifier equals and then you can have a stress impact so stress underscore impact and then you will put base equals and in here you can put major stress loss, minor stress loss, major stress gain or minor stress gain. And then I think they've got medium stress loss and gain as well. Now, one thing I get asked quite often is how do you create pregnancies? Now you can do that with this line of code here. Now this is kind of a debug way of doing it. Um, I haven't really used this code myself within my own mods, so I can't guarantee that this is 100%. But if my memory serves me correct, this is, this is a way that you can do it. Now, a standard way of getting this result is to trigger an event. So you can have trigger event equals, and then you'll put your event ID in here. And then that means it will trigger this event. And then the days is just how many days after the interaction you want the event to trigger. But that's another way on how you can deal with pregnancies. You can also use an if command. So if you wanted to add this character to your court with this interaction, you could just do a limit and then not is courtier of scope at to target. So again, we're referring back to our saved scope up here. This line of code is saying, if they're not already within our court, then add courtier scope recipient target. So again, this is what we saved our recipient as. And then that's basically saying, if they're not already part of our call, add them to the call. And then other conditions will apply, just like if they have titles or stuff like that. But that's just a really basic example of how you can do that. If you want the recipient, to always accept this like so they don't have a choice then you can just put auto accept equals always equals yes now i know up here we put is ai no so this will not be shown to players that are ai but if you wanted to reinforce that you could put ai potential equals always no and then another way of doing it is ai will do and you put a base score we've got a base score of zero so that means they will never use this if you did have an interaction that you want the ai to use you can use this base score to then specify how often you want them to use it but like i keep saying go through the games files have a look what they use if there's anything there that you know you like you can always add it in but the most important thing to take away from this is that on accept is what happens when they accept it you've got this to show you why you can't use the interaction if it's unavailable scope recipient is the person the interaction is being used on and scope actor is the person who is using the interaction and is shown is who the interaction can be shown for like what player can use the interaction and what player it can be used on now if you found this video helpful please hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see more of these videos but thanks for watching and i'll see you soon